over. You see their tribe. You see there's, there's no marrow in the bone. You see they're scattered all over the valley. They ain't even full skeletons. I mean the bones are scattered all over the valley. They're just bones, but answer me a question. Is it you? Can these bones live? Ezekiel answers the only way he knows how to answer. Lord, you know. Critical race theory was born out of critical legal theory. Am I teaching y'all something today? There emerged two common beliefs linking all critical race theories. First, white supremacy has subordinated black people and other people of color. That's just a fact. That, that, how, how in the world are you going to fight against that being taught in any school? White supremacy has subordinated black people and other people of color. That's a fact. Why don't you want that to be taught in school? You, 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 you let your schools teach us that Columbus discovered America? That's a lie. You let your schools teach us that George Washington couldn't tell a lie? That's a lie. You, you let your schools teach us that some slave owners were beneficent and good slave owners. There were no good slave owners. Anybody who owned people was evil. That's a lie. You let your schools teach us that Abraham Lincoln was good for Negroes. No, Abraham Lincoln was trying to save the Union. And Abe Lincoln himself said if he could save the Union and keep black people in chains, he would do it. That's a lie. Come on, somebody. You let them teach us about a white Jesus. Uh, you let them teach us uh, uh, that Native Americans were the aggressors. Uh, come on, somebody. That 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 white folk had a manifest destiny, and that the Pilgrims uh, were good at Native Americans. That's a lie. All day, every day, you let them teach us lies all throughout my history in school. I was taught lies, uh, but you got a problem with critical race theory because it teaches the truth uh, that white supremacy has subordinated black people and people of color. The right to bear arms. Uh, let me just back up a little bit. And let me take you on back to the late 1960s when Ronald Reagan was the governor of California. And they were oppressing black folk and uh, a group of, of men and women uh, known as the Black Panther Party mm -hmm, decided that they were going to defend the rights of black folk. And the Black Panthers uh, uh, decided that the Second Amendment wasn't just for white folk. So they strapped themselves with guns and showed up at the Capitol in California. And when they saw them Negroes with guns, come on somebody. That's why I say if you ever really want to get gun laws changed, just just strap all these Negroes up. They'll, they'll change them laws before the week is over. When the Black Panthers, watch this, I want you to they, they, the, the the California legislator uh, passed what was called the Mulford Act. It was a gun control act that decided who could get guns, who couldn't get guns, what could be in your background, what couldn't be in your background. It was the first time in history that the National Rifle Association, the NRA, supported restrictive uh, gun legislation all because black folk had the nerve to get strapped look at your neighbor and say neighbor go get strapped <laughs> amen somebody y'all gonna say bishop told us to get strapped i said it go get strapped it just got real quiet up in here but y'all already know i'm a triple p amen y'all know what a triple p is right a pistol packing preacher <laughs> amen somebody
to go back to Lodabar. Your work's not done just because you made it to the palace. Bless the name of the Lord. But you've got a responsibility to help somebody else make it across. y'all City, rep your town. Trying to share this to some of my group. to the gram good morning youtube good morning facebookers good morning twitter spacers they didn't give me the option on twitter space to do the video today kind of interesting i wonder if they already left it alone after a, a short preview Ninety point seven WTCC. Good morning and welcome to the Spoken Word. I'm your host, Bishop Talbert Swan the Second. And as usual, we'll be telling it like it is through cultural idioms and nuances that shape the order, ethos, and chaos of the African American experience. Words have their own vitality, they shape their own consciousness and create their own context for interpreting social and spiritual reality. It is five minutes past the hour of 9 a.m. I want to thank Mr. Kenneth Barnett for bringing us up until the nine o'clock hour with The Promise. You can hear The Promise every Monday morning from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m., bringing you the best in the gospel music. Good way to start out your Monday morning. Great way to start out your week. Continuing the conversation, I started, let me put my signatures on. Uh, I started um, 
Friday. Um, and I started talking about how to recognize the racist dog whistles. So you all know that there was a terrible tragedy in Baltimore with the collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge. And of course, Brandon Scott, the young brother who is the mayor there, um, and somebody told me the other day, oh, that guy's almost 40. Yeah, what are you talking about, young? Listen, when you get my age, um, people that 39 are young. <laughs> you know, it's, it's just what it is. Uh, you know, I got a daughter who will be 39 in September. Um, so, you know, hey, it's all a matter of vantage point, all a matter of vantage. So this young brother who is the mayor, and matter of fact, good morning to my 38-year-old daughter who's on the live stream. Um, his young brother has been doing an excellent job in responding to this terrible tragedy. And of course, all the bigots came out calling him the DEI mayor. And um, of course, we know DEI is just another word that racist white supremacists use for nigger. Um, and they have a bunch of code words that mean that. And you particularly hear them around election time. Um, they throw out these terms that basically uh, send dog whistles to their base that you got to come out and vote and protect us from the niggers. Um, we'll talk about that today. 413-736-2781. I hope everybody had a wonderful, terrific um, resurrection weekend. Uh, we had a great resurrection weekend, um, both in, at our Vermont location and in Springfield. Uh, we were in Vermont Saturday morning and had a, a wonderful um, fellowship and service and Pastor Aaron Roberson preached us happy, and it was just a great time. And then, of course, on yesterday as well um, here in Springfield. And I'm sure that you all had it as well. I was trying to compile. Um, I started doing something called the Monday Mix um, to post on Monday morning, uh, five minutes, five preachers, um, clips of various sermons from various persons across the, the country for inspirational reasons. Uh, and trying to compile uh, five closings from the Easter service, from the resurrection service. I want to see. I wanted to see how various preachers uh, got Jesus up out the grave. And and and, and how, how many of y'all pastors said early? If, if you if you haven't heard early Sunday morning, you ain't been to a black church. No, no black church, Baptist, <laughs> Methodist, Kojic. You ain't been, if you ain't heard early Sunday morning, y'all need to go to church, okay? 413-736-2781 <laughs> is the number here. Rep your city, rep your town. Let me know where you are chiming in from. Don't go nowhere. Don't touch that dial. Like, share, subscribe. Tell somebody Bishop is on the air. We'll be right back. But the yes is the growth to change. The being in the road would be the end of the road if you refuse to change. Dig a little higher, dig a little higher, dig a little deeper, dig a little deeper, go a little further, go a little further. Come on, come on, come on, dig a little higher, come on, yeah. Of life is growth, but the essence of growth is change. The being in the road will be the end of the road. If you, if you refuse, refuse to change. change, your life will never change until you get disgusted of where you are. Whatever you don't hate is what you tolerate. You must learn from the past, plan for the future, and live for the end. For it is your daily routine that determines your success or failure in life. It's the choices that you have made up to this point that will determine the rest of your life. So break the cycle that doing enough is simply good enough. You only get out what you put in, so don't settle for the crumbs when you can have a whole loaf. So push yourself push beyond push your limitations. Come on. Reach a little higher. Reach a little higher. Dig a little deeper. Dig a little deeper. Go a little further. Don't stop. Don't stop. Come on. Don't stop. Reach a little higher. Reach a little higher. Dig a little deeper. Dig a little deeper. Go a little further. Go a little 
Don't stop, don't stop, don't stop, don't stop. So you gotta break the routine of trying to beat the system. Manipulators will always try to bypass the process for the quick progress. There are no shortcuts to success. There are no elevators to the top. You gotta take it one step at a time. You gotta break the routine of allowing others to get into your head and control who you are and where you're going. You see, when you're about the positive, you're going to always have haters. But don't let your haters push you down. Let your haters push you forward to the next level. So when people show you who they really are, don't perceive them to be something else that they're not. See, a zebra does not change his stripes. So you got to keep pushing yourself to the next level. Yeah, there you go. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Come on. And the greatness is the nature that you were born out of. You'll never discover your greatness without hard work and dedication. Greatness says more about who you are and what you expect for yourself. And greatness will always attract greatness. Show me your friends and I'll show you the future. The future. You get to step away. You get to step away. You get to step away. Don't ever give up. Come on. You just a step away. You almost there. Come on. All right, where y'all coming in from? You see, there's no mountain too high, no valley too low. Let me see what's popping on the gram. It's all in the power of your imagination. If you can see the invisible, let me see what's popping on the gram. So stretch yourself, take yourself to the next level. Come on, come on, come on. And then let me see what's happening on YouTube. I see y'all. Okay, Whitney, you on YouTube? I thought you was on Facebook. It's all good. I see you, Chicago. Chi Town on the ground, Michigan on the ground. What part of Michigan? Unless you're just representing the whole state. And that's all right, too. You can rep your whole state if you want to. One who's seen a lot of pain and had her share of sorrow, but who never Where y'all at, Facebook? St. Petersburg. Cheated on, I see. Oh, yeah, yeah, you are on Facebook. But okay. Just made me stronger and I was Houston. That's right. And though I've been tempted, I refuse to stoop to their level. I rose above that nonsense. I see you, Nate my Anderson, right. my brother. Good morning, good enough, enough, Counselor Click Bruce. I kicked his butt Claudia, I good morning, good morning, good morning. Power that says I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me and brought me. Greg Sneed, ow, ow, my frat brother. That I'm smart, I'm beautiful, I'm a child of the king. Abundant love for me, he came to bring. Oh, yes, when I look in the mirror, I love what I see. That strong, beautiful black woman, that woman is me. 90.7. WTCC, good morning. Welcome to the spoken word. I'm your host, Bishop Talbert Swan the second. Happy Resurrection Weekend. I know we're at the end of it. It was last weekend and all of that. It's, it, it's all good. It's all good. Um, hope you enjoyed. Um, um, it was definitely a wonderful worship celebration, but it was also a great time um, hanging with my family, uh, my wife and my boys. Um, you know, my younger boys that are still at home. And my son, Talbert, who still lives in the city, came over, brought my grandbabies. So I got to be surrounded by my grands 
and um and my fellas so uh eat a nice dinner and kind of hang out um after service uh and then i got to do what old men do go down to the man cave turn on the ncaa tournament sit in my recliner and fall asleep and miss the games <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah fall asleep and, and miss the game but it all worked out you know because all things work together for good that's what the bible tells me it works together for good so i was watching um nc state and duke and i woke up and nc state had won so you know god is good God is God is great and greatly to be praised. I do not like Duke. <laughs> yes, I admittedly am a Duke hater. So I, you know, I I can just tell y'all that, you know, um unequivocally, unequivocally, y'all, I am a Duke hater. And so I don't care if Satan and his imps <laughs> are playing against Duke. I'm I'm down with Satan. <laughs> I know that sounds extreme, but I'm just keeping it a buck. I'm just I'm just I'm just trying to keep it a buck. When it comes to Duke, that's where I am in the great scheme of things. Now I, and I know there are some other folks who are that way. And this goes back. And I know you younger folks probably don't understand that. Um, um, there's a couple of teams. There's a few teams um, across the NCAA that have had some really bad um, racial issues um, through the years that have turned some of us sour on them some some various programs brigham young is another one um you know brigham young duke there's certain programs that it's just you know bottom line whoever's playing against them that's who i'm that's who i'm down with that, that, that it is what it is that's who i'm down with um bottom line so anyway so sorry for y'all duke fans um uh, sorry not sorry 413-736-2781 413-736-2781 is the number here if you want to chime in on the conversation started this conversation um back in um on on friday give me half a moment one quick house cleaning thing it's a little warm in here so i gotta i gotta temperature adjust Spring ain't got here, but uh, it feel like an African summer in the studio. <laughs> I, I looked at the forecast, y'all, and they said snow. Snow flurries expected on Thursday. <laughs> Only in New England. The spring comes, and in April, they're predicting snow. Anyway, um, but I've been here, so I already know how they get down in New England. I already know how I already know how the weather gets down here, so I let me not complain about it. So I started this conversation. In light of what they were saying about Brandon Scott being a DEI mayor 
That's what they call them, the DEI mayor. Diversity, equity, and inclusion. That's the new N-word. That's the new N-word. Remember a couple of years ago during the 2020 election, the, the N-word was, was uh, CRT, critical race theory. They were calling any and everything critical race theory that wasn't critical race theory. But it was, it was, it was the racist dog whistle. So whatever you think is affiliated with black people, to throw a cold word to your fellow racist, this, this, this is about the ends, you used CRT. So everything became CRT. Everything. You know, if 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 a teacher used used a book that was written by a black author, that's CRT. <laughs> if there was a black teacher in the classroom, that's CRT. <laughs> you know, if the color of the book was black, that's CRT. Everything was CRT. Well, and and it and it morphs from cycle to cycle. Remember when Obama was first running, and Joe the Plumber said that sounds like socialism. Socialism became the new N word. I don't. We don't want no socialism. We don't. We, 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 we don't. We don't want socialism. It wasn't that that they 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 knew that socialism was not coming to America. And it wasn't that they didn't want socialism. They didn't want that N-word in the White House. So socialism became the N-word. So various terms are used. So now it's DEI. The DEI mayor. Um, the former president of Harvard that they ousted out of Harvard. She became the DEI um, college president. So anytime a black person is in a position of power or authority, then they say it's DEI. In other words, they don't deserve to be there. They're black. They got there because they're black. And, 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 and here's the thing. <laughs> The crazy thing about it is white folks and white men in particular in America, there is no other demographic that has gotten positions of authority and power in this nation just because of the color of their skin and or their gender than white men. Why do you think every president except for one has been a white man. Every vice president, except for one, has been a white man. Nobody, 90% of the CEOs across the nation, white men, nobody gets to where they are because of their racial makeup like white men. And then y'all got the nerve to talk about black people getting something just because they black. You know what we got just because we're black? Can I tell you the, 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 the things that we got in America just because, because I'm, I'm not going to deny that we haven't gotten some things just because of the color of our skin. We definitely, have received some things in America because of the color of our skin. I, I'll make that admission. I'll make that concession. Okay, so all y'all racists out there, I'm making a concession right now that you are right. We definitely received some things in America just because we're black. I'll name a few. Enslavement. We didn't apply for that. We didn't try to get that. We didn't ask y'all for that. We got that because we're black. Murder. We didn't apply for that. 
Where do you see black folk in line saying, kill me? Rape. Our women didn't apply to be raped on plantations in this nation. They got that because they were black and women. So yeah, they they, they did get some things because they, they're black women. Lynching, brutalization, dehumanization, redlining, mass incarceration, racial profiling. I can go on and on and on and on. Syphilis and other diseases that y'all experimented with us on. Oh, we got some stuff just because we're black, just not the stuff y'all claiming that we got, just not the projection y'all are giving out there. We didn't get jobs because we were black. We were denied jobs because we're black. We didn't get housing because we're black. That's why they had to have a Fair Housing Act. We were denied housing because we're black. Matter of fact, the guy, some of y'all want to be president again, started out his career in real estate by denying black people the opportunity to rent his properties. And how ironic it is. How ironic it is 40 some odd years later that the same guy who refused to rent to black people is on the verge this week, if he didn't come up with that bond money, is on the verge of having a black woman able to seize his properties. How ironic is that? So yeah, we got stuff because we were black. But all the stuff you're claiming that we get because we're black are all of the things that this nation has denied us because we were black. Uh, college admissions, uh, job opportunities and employment, career opportunities, uh, housing, health care, all of that stuff we were denied because we're black. And you all had it simply because you were white. So let's just let's just tell the truth about the history of these yet to be United States of America. Um, so their, their gullible audience gets gaslighted real easy because they, they listen to a revisionist history. See, in their revisionist history, it goes something like this. All the things I talked about, enslavement, brutalization, rape, murder, uh, mass incarceration, castration, being burned, lynched, tarred and feathered, all that stuff. They remix all of that. And they say, you know what? They were savages in Africa. Practicing voodoo. Running around the jungle naked, doing devil worship with bones in their noses and the uh, enslavers came and rescued them from that terrible life and brought them to America and introduced them to Jesus and gave them religion and salvation. And they didn't treat them all that bad on the plantation. Th this is their version of our horror story. Th th this is how they tell the story. You know, what was that? Let's see if I can find that crazy dude. <laughs> this this evangelical preacher was talking about how slavery wasn't that bad. Um, and how the good people on the plantation, what good white people on the plantation? What are you talking about? You know, they 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 introduced them to Jesus. They got the gospel. They got the gospel. So, you know, and God worked it out, right? I mean, I mean, he had the nerve to say, he had the nerve to say, um, um, you know, 
did the slaves go to go to DC and protest? No, they didn't. I mean, he actually said that, like, like the slaves had the right to just gather and have a million man march. I mean, I mean, these folks say some crazy stuff. And they're actually preaching this stuff in their churches. They're actually preaching this stuff in their churches and they have young impressionable minds um who are listening to this and and you know what these young impressionable minds do these young white kids who go to these churches um they go to schools like the southwick schools and they do mock slave auctions and racially bully their black classmates the, these the that's what produces the kids that do that kind of stuff this revisionist history that is taught in the home and in their churches and in other spaces um all of the time uh that and that's why when they talk about um racism dying uh, with the younger generation, we balk at it because all they're doing is they're passing these racist ideologies down from generation to generation. And they keep trying to exact their racist ideas on their own generation. So that's why, you know, they put a picture of a black student in a urinal in the bathroom and urinate on it. That's why um, on the same day, six students have charges filed against them for racial bullying. They're writing on the wall in the bathroom, the KKK is good and niggers are bad. Yeah, th this is the generation that is supposed to eradicate racism, 13 and 14 year olds. Mm hmm. And so they, they're taught these these code words per capita. You know, the 1350 lie, 13 percent black people are only 13 percent of the population and they commit 50 percent of all the violent crime, which is a straight lie. I mean, a bold it's a it's a bold faced lie based upon the statistics that are promulgated by their FBI. And, and it's like you look at the stats and you're just going to tell the lie anyway. You can go to the, 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 the UCR, you know, the reported crime statistics of the FBI for the latest years that they have. And you will find overwhelmingly the majority of violent crimes and all crime are committed by white folks. Then they'll say something like, well, that's because there's more of us. So you have to learn what per capita means. So that's a new N-word, the per capita. We know what per capita means. What they're trying to say, when they use the 1350 lie, they're trying to say that Black people disproportionately commit crime based upon their population. That if you're only 13% of the population, you should only be committing about 13% of the crime. But y'all are committing over 50% of the crime. That's not even true. But I'll tell you what is true. According, according to the FBI, you can go to my page and look it up, uh, uh, white people commit 69.6% .6 of all crime. That's almost 70%. Now, they're going to say, well, we, 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 we make up more of the population. No, let's break it down. Because out of that nearly 70%, of the crime that is committed, 65% of all crime is committed by white men because white males overwhelmingly commit most of that crime. So let me give you a little per capita lesson. If 30% of the population is committing 65%, of all of the crime. Isn't that a little disproportionate with your numbers, fella? 
Shouldn't, if you only make up 30% of the population, you only should be committing about 30% of the crime? But you're committing crime at more than double your population, white men? And these are the main dudes always talking about this per capita stuff. Not only do they, <laughs> see, this is the problem. The problem they have is when they run up on somebody like me, you can't just spew figures. You can't just say stuff and think that we're dumb enough to believe. You've been lying about black people for time immemorial. What in the world make you think that we just gonna take at face value anything y'all say? Oh yeah, we're 13% we're of the population. We commit, yeah, that, that, no. We, we ain't believing y'all lies. We're not going. We're not just going to buy hook, line, and sinker what you say just because you said y'all been putting out racist tropes and stereotypes about us for far too long. We're hip to that game. We're hip to your your gaslighting and your lies. We know how to do research. And according to your FBI, you can go to ucr.fbi.gov. You can look up the stats yourself. You can go to table 43. You can look it up yourself. 69%, 69.6% of all crimes. Guess what else they the white men commit? 67.6% of all rapes. 30% of the population are committing nearly 70% of the rapes. That's a little bit disproportionate with your numbers, buddy. Let's talk about the per capita. They commit 62.8% of aggravated assaults. 68.4% of burglaries. They want you to think you need to worry about black folk breaking into your house. But white men are out there committing nearly 70 percent of the burglaries. And check this out. Seventy two percent of all sex offenses. So, you know, who's likely. To molest your child. And your grandmother. And your daughter. Non melanated men. Non melanated men. That's the facts. And, and see, unlike them just pulling out statistics that don't exist just because it fits their agenda, these are real based upon their numbers. We don't do these numbers. It's the FBI, a bunch of white men who said that white men commit these crimes. Now, you know, it's something when 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 y'all own statistics debunk your lies. So they have these these coded. These dog whistles. That they send out and you got to recognize what they are so you don't get caught up in buying into this. So let me play with my brother from. Uh, Maryland said the mayor, the honorable mayor of Baltimore, when he responded to these bigots calling him the DEI mayor. I know, and we all know, and you know very well, that black men and young black men in particular have been the boogeyman for those who are racist and think that only uh, uh, straight, wealthy white men should have a saying anything. We've been the boogeyman from them since the first day they brought us to this country. And what they mean by DI, in my opinion, is duly elected incumbent. Uh, we know what they want to say, uh, but they don't have the courage to say the N-word. And the fact that I don't uh, believe in their uh, untruthful and wrong ideology, and I am very proud of, proud of my heritage and who I am and where I come from, scares them. Uh, because me being on my position means that their way of thinking, their way of life of being comfortable and suffering and while everyone else suffers is going to be at risk. And they should be afraid because that's my purpose in life. As long as his pants were sagging. Here's my little add on to it. They didn't have a problem with him. As long as he was calling women bees and hoes. They didn't have a problem. 
problem with him. As long as he was running the streets, they weren't worried about him. But the moment he's clothed in his right mind and sitting next to Jesus, all of a sudden, they're afraid. Can I tell you, brothers, there's nothing more intimidating to the forces of evil, to the enemy of our soul, to those who are agents against the will of God being done in the earth, than when black men are clothed in their right mind and hooked up with Jesus. scare the hell out of them yeah and that's exactly what a brother like uh brandon scott does you know he 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 debunks their stereotypes you know young brilliant brother um running a major u.s city uh and you know their response is oh he's the dei mayor no 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 <laughs> and here's the, here's the other thing about that how you gonna be a dei mayor basically saying he got a position that he didn't deserve how, how, how help me understand how you become a dei mayor when that's an elected position that, that people go to the polls and they vote. And, and not only did people go to the polls and vote for this brother, he got over 70% of the vote. I mean, a landslide. I mean, overwhelmingly won the vote. How do you, how do you literally destroy the competition? by getting 70% of the vote, but you DEI. Now, now by contrast, their guy lost the presidency by 8 million votes and they were still claiming he won. <laughs> you see how that works? A brother, a brother wins an election with 70% of the vote, and he's DEI. Their guy loses by 8 million votes, and they still want to claim that he won. Man, if y'all don't get out of my face with that foolishness. And, and then, here, and then here's, the, here's, here's, here's the reality. Once again, let's just keep it a buck. A buck fifty, however many bucks you want to keep it. Um, this is the other thing, and they get so upset. That, you know, they get so upset when you just drop factual information. Um, you know, they they, they get so mad. Um, let me let me get this little tidbit that I dropped. Um. And they were calling my phone, making death threats. <laughs> and they taught they call us snowflakes. Uh, the other thing that got them upset. Go to my Twitter account. I posted on the, the only post I made on Resurrection Sunday was a picture of Jesus. And the caption just said, He is risen. Hashtag resurrection sunday now how 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 harmless is that a picture of jesus he is risen hashtag resurrection sunday that that's that that's that's what it says um and they lost their mind I mean, they literally have lost their minds. That picture went viral. You know why? I bet y'all can guess why. 
because y'all know me. Y'all know the Jesus that I posted didn't have blonde hair. Y'all know the Jesus that I posted ain't had no blue eyes. Y'all know he didn't look like no surfer dude. He wasn't no European. He didn't look like no Brad Pitt. <laughs> Y'all know I posted black Jesus. And a simple picture of black Jesus that said he is risen. Hashtag Resurrection Sunday has got these folk all up in their feelings. All up in their feelings. The truth hurts. I said, here's a fact. More white women have been DEI hires than any other demographic in the nation. There's empirical evidence that validates that. There is empirical evidence that validates the fact that um, more white women have been on welfare than any other demographic. Th th this is just fact. So, and and see, and 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 I broke that down because these are all of the code words that they use when they're trying to throw out their dog whistles. Um. But the number one beneficiary of affirmative action are white women. The number one beneficiary of welfare, food stamps, all of that, white women. Um, the number one beneficiary of DEI, white women. The demographic that gets the highest number of Section 8 subsidies, white women. Overwhelmingly, the highest number of people that are on Medicare, white women. So all of the little tropes and terms that they use as code word for the N-word, the people that actually are benefiting from all of that stuff, are their wives, their mamas, their daughters, granddaughters, sisters, aunties, their mistresses, girlfriends, that's who's benefiting from it. That's the fact. When 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 I when I got out of college, I was a computer science major and I worked for a, a firm called Combustion Engineering in the data center. And um, shortly after I, I, I got there, um, it was my first experience with what was a corporate takeover. And a, and a company called Combustion Engineering bought out. No, no, it was called Combustion Engineering that I worked at. Asa Brown Boveri, still a company that exists today, bought out Combustion Engineering. And they laid off my whole department, data center. I, I got to see the ruthlessness of corporate takeovers. I had a, my boss was um, a guy named Lee DeRosiers. And Lee, I'm trying, I think I might have locked out the next host. I want to make sure I ain't locked. Um, my, my boss was a guy named Lee DeRosier. And Lee had worked for the company for 19 and a half years. He was literally, he was, he was only 49 years old, but he was going to retire in six months. They laid him off so that he couldn't get his retirement. Um, that, that, well, that was, there's a whole lot to that story, but that's a whole nother subject. That was my first encounter with, a, with the, the ruthlessness of a corporate, um, of a corporate takeover. So I went to work um, in the environmental field because during the summers while I was in college, I had worked for an environmental company and I had several licenses and stuff. So I, I went back to that company, you know, for some temporary employment till I could get back into the computer 
uh, field, which I never did get back into. But anyway, so I worked for a place called Contest in East Longmeadow. Um, and a white guy owned the company, predominantly white company, predominantly white employees. I was literally the only black full-time employee for the company. I found out while I was there that Contest was a Samba certified company in Massachusetts. Samba is a certification that 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 minority um, organizations get. They get certified if if their ownership or half their board or so on are, uh, are parts of a minority or disenfranchised group. So predominantly black organizations, that's how they get that certification. And then they can qualify for grants and programs that have set aside for Samba certified organizations. Th that was part of affirmative action that was put into place to try to right the wrongs that had been done. I found out that contest was a Samba certified organization and I started doing some digging because I'm like, how in the hamburger is this organization that's owned by a white man that got all white employees? I'm the only speck of color up in here. How are they Samba certified and literally getting contracts set aside for black owned, women owned and other owned organizations? Well, you know how they did that? The guy who owned the company had his wife, a white woman, listed as 51% owner. She didn't come to work. She didn't never step foot in the place. She didn't work there. Nothing. She was at home raising kids. But she was listed as 51% owner, and he was 49% owner. And so they considered it a female run organization. So they got Samba certification and qualified for all those contracts. So white men have been manipulating the system and benefiting from affirmative action using their white wives for time immemorial since the programs got put into place. So y'all save all that drama because because. Y'all are the ones who have benefited the most from DEI, from affirmative action, from all of that stuff that you're using as code word for the N-word. Straight no chaser. Let me get you in here. Take a couple of calls and, and transition out. Straight no chaser. You got the microphone. Four one three seven three six two seven eight one. Uh, let me see. Straight, going once. Unmute your mic. You you got the mic. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Bishop. Yes, sir. Um, I saw that picture that you put up, and I already knew it, it was going to be trouble. <laughs> I was laughing when I saw it because the Jesus that you put up there, and and he was, uh, let's say, hella melanated. Yeah. Yeah, but um, also um, I just uh, actually uh, tweeted about what you talked about as far as uh, these these uh, white supremacists and these stats. I don't believe nothing that they put up is a stat. If you if you would tamper with the Bible as far mm. as taking out the slave chronicles, etc., mm. to condone slavery, what makes you think that um, I'm gonna believe any stats that you put up? Mm. Mm hmm. Talk about it. Oh, did y'all just did y'all just hear um the news? What's that? Trump's dead. Huh? Trump's dead. What do you mean? It's it's breaking news. No, stop playing. I'm looking at the news. I'm looking at the news right now. Uh uh, stop playing. April Fool. I knew you was gonna do that. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good day. All right, appreciate you, man. Oh boy, he was going to have us play some shouting music. <laughs> oh, <Woo. laughs> Mr. Al, Mr. Al, we'll get Mr. Al and Untouchable J up in here before we get out. Mr. Al, you got the microphone. Yeah, oh, 
that was a very interesting uh, April Fool's uh, comic just a moment ago. Tell me about it. Yo, wow. But, you know, I'm not surprised that, you know, there were a lot of uh, white folks, you know, commenting on your picture that you posted yesterday. Because, you know, you know, the truth is finally coming out and everything else. Heck, over this past week, Russia opened its churches for the first time in since, I don't know, it's been a long time, but they opened up the churches and revealed yeah. all, the, all the pictures. Ain't that something? All the, um, yeah, they revealed it and everything else. Even Pope McDonald said these um, people were, were black. Well, well the, the irony of that, the irony of that is Putin the the box that Putin opened up that had the picture of Jesus had never been opened in like thousands of years, and so he yes. he's opening this box on film, and lo and behold, it's a black Jesus. <laughs> I yeah. mean, white folks are just flabbergasted that wait a minute, hold up, wait a minute, what? And we've been telling them this all the time, you know. And and, 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 here, and here's yeah. the thing, brother. And it's driving here, them crazy too. Here's what, what somebody said to me yesterday. They said, "Um, Jesus was not black. He wasn't white, but he wasn't black. He was olive skin or tan." And and my and my position was this: first of all, they keep saying Middle Eastern. There was no such term as Middle East until 1850s, after they built the Suez Canal. So all of right. that, all of that region was Northeast Africa. Period. It was Africa. Yeah. So Jesus was, was born Africa. in Africa. Period. And 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 then here's the thing. I said, I said, okay, so let's let's go with your premise. Let's say Jesus was olive skin or tan. How come you ain't up under somebody's post of a white Jesus correcting them? Why you here? Why you here under this black Jesus? Talking about he ain't black, he olive skin or tan. Why you ain't up under all the thousands of pictures on social media of white, blonde hair, blue eyed Jesus telling them he ain't white, he's olive skin or tan? Because you don't have a problem with white Jesus. You only got a problem with black Jesus. Right. Pat. Thank you. Let me get Untouchable J up in here. J from CT. Listen, good morning, brother. How you feel? I can't call it good, brother. I, I'm, I'm happy that uh, I'm here to, to, to bat last and bring it home. Great points. Excellent broadcast. Um, I was going to touch on a lot of things. I'm just touching on what I think is the most important. If this was truly a Christian nation, one, we would have brought these slaves over here. We would have killed any indigenous peoples, and I don't mean we as in us. Right. That would be the uh, time of the society. But as soon as things happen, we fall back into a Christ-like attitude to stop things, and that's never happened. Mm -hmm. Exactly to your point, if Jesus' color was a, was an issue, you corrected on everything. If mm -hmm. Jesus' conduct was something that was pivotal to how we lead this country, we wouldn't be doing the things that we're doing. We wouldn't be giving arms to uh, Palestine. We wouldn't, I'm, excuse me, to the Israels, Israeli. We wouldn't be giving arms and funding wars, so forth and so on. So the, the, the dominant society gets to play both sides of the field convenient. One of the funniest things that I found is so funny, I see this all the time. They always have something to say about, you know, DEI DI and inclusions, and they use these, these uh, words, right? We know, like you said before, it's just a crappy way of saying nigger. When they say urbanization, that's nigger. When they say BLM, that's nigger. When they mm -hmm. say woke. But they also have their hands in other and in, in things that don't concern us because Baltimore is a black city. Mm -hmm. So how would that be a DEA, DEI inclusion hire when right. it's a black city? Right. They say the same thing about Tiffany Hendricks, say what you want about Dalton and Chicago land, but that's a black city. Mm -hmm. So you can't be saying BLM this, BLM that. I checked a, a white guy the other day, uh, you know, the Black Lives Matter troops, and I said, so one, Black Lives Matter was a movement that got commandeered. It was a hashtag that got commandeered into an organization. Yep. No one was sent out to do anything. And this is what shut them up. I said, and my son and I talked about this all the time. Black Lives Matter, that, the, the rioting was a major city issue. Mm -hmm. There wasn't anything going on in the state of Connecticut. We didn't have one issue in any city. Same with Mass. Outside of Boston, Worcester wasn't rioting. Springfield wasn't rioting. Uh, you know, Rhode Island, there was no riots in Providence and so forth and so on. Philly, D.C., Miami, major cities, yes, that happens. 
But the same thing happens when a white team wins the Stanley Cup every year. There you They're go. Riding. They just there you go. On I'll land there. God bless. Appreciate you. There you go. And they don't call that rioting. That's just kids being kids. You know, so when white kids come out after sporting events and flip over cars and burn stuff and and break windows and all that that kind of stuff, they just got a little bit rowdy. But if black folks break into a target because they're upset that a black person was murdered, that's a problem. They're rioting. Anyway, I got to get out your way. Check me out on Friday on the Black Love Experience at 9 o'clock a.m. Mrs. Cynthia Butler is coming up next with mid-morning jazz, great black music, and more. You don't want to touch the dial. Keep it locked right here at 90.7 FM, 90.7 FM HD 1. Looking for a place to worship? Check us out at the Spring of Hope Church of God in Christ, 35 Alden Street, the Brick Church right there at Six Corners. There'll be prayer, praise, and preaching. We're building better tomorrows by changing lives today. Listen, brothers and sisters, until the next time I talk to you and you talk to me, always remember, God loves you, and so do I. Peace, blessings, and stay in the spirit of resurrection. Thank you.